I don't like pizza, so there is no danger for me answering this question. My friend here, who went to the master, Alicia Santoramo, one of the best chess streamers that exist on earth, my uh, beloved friend and enemy, frenemy as they say, my partner in crime, Alicia, meet Alicia. And here we go, you meet women grandmaster Dina Belenkaya. She's not just a strong chess player, but she's also a great content creator promoting chess uh, and um, female power in the chess world. And uh, yeah, as she said, we are friends, we're enemies, but um, I think every time we play on the chessboard, there is fire on the board. My favorite opening is the Spanish, if I need to tell you a serious answer. Uh, if not, I will go with the grab. Damn, I knew it. I knew it. Of course. My favorite opening is Karo Khan, although I'm not... Uh surprising anywhere with this answer but i won't go with anything else you know like group defense uh, oh my gosh i'd go with uh i mean i have to say blitz i guess i would go with three plus two because it lets you some time to think you know to make some um reasonable decisions that's very interesting i would go with three plus zero instead you know why? You want to flag me? Because I always beat Dina at that time control. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Bye. I think that a few years ago, I would have I would have answered Magnus Carlsen the whole time, just because he's number one, he's strong, and there is n there is no need of explanation to this answer. But right now, I tend to look at a chess player a bit 360 degrees. And I think there is one female uh, that is very inspiring and she is women grandmaster Jennifer Shadi. Uh, she's not just a strong chess player, she's also into poker and she's promoting female chess so much. She also has an amazing book, Chess Queens. And I really like how she's as a person and as a chess player. Yeah, Jennifer is definitely one of my uh, clear um, inspirations in the chess world. Um, but when it comes to such a particular question as your favorite uh, um, chess player or your inspiration in the chess world, your idol in the chess world, I would definitely go with Gotham Chess. <laughs> my mortal game is... Uh, my victory against uh, British champion Luke McShane, Grandmaster Luke McShane. He's over 2600, and that was in Scotch defense. I think I have two immortal games, and it's one that I lost, but I was fighting for being European champion, and it's immortal because I will never forget the pain after that game. And then, of course, an immortal game is the one I beat my first GM. Uh, which was uh, in Trieste in 2015. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, beating a Grandmaster with the black pieces after a terrible opening is quite an immortal game. <laughs> My favorite opponent is the one that let me give amazing checkmates when we both see just to make the game a masterpiece. I really like those kind of opponent. Then my worst opponent is, of course, uh, Dina Belenkaya because she's very strong at chess. But Kinnig assigned, I don't like people that are toxic uh, on the chess board, uh, so over the board or online, so toxic players. Did you just call me a toxic player? It's not you. I said joking aside. Correct. I would never. You're not toxic player. I'm not. You're many things, but not a toxic. I'm player. not a toxic player. Well, my favorite chess player over the board um, and online is definitely uh, Two Face, right? Gosh, I haven't seen that question on the list. My favorite chess player. Andrea Botas. My favorite chess player to face is Andrea Botas. <laughs> because not just we can checkmate her on the board, but you can also punch her in the face. Or get punched in the face. 
quite some time. So that never <laughs> happened. Never no, happened to me. I've never seen the technical knockouts. My least favorite opponent or my biggest nightmare is her sister, Alexandra. Because I never get a chance to play against her. Oh. This new generation of chess players um, is very particular, very different from us. Because uh, these new youngsters, when they grow up, they play online all the time. They tend to be extremely sharp and tactical. They do analyze a lot of openings with engines. And sometimes I feel like they tend to forget about classics or neglect the importance of studying classics, classical games, classical reading, classical books, maybe end game techniques and all that part of, you know, theory background that you come from, especially when you come from Soviet chess school is definitely um, this new trend. But I mean, these youngsters, this is what makes them also extremely uh, you know, as I said, extremely tactical, sharp, and uh, they somehow lead the new generation of chess. I mean, look at Ferruja. Definitely a good example. Um, well, I would describe it this way. When you said they are very different from us, did you mean that we are old? No. I meant that we, when we were studying chess, Alessia, you and me, we didn't have all these online tools. That was incredible tactical races, puzzle rushes, you know, this uh, chassable courses or even books that you can read through, you know, chassable and digital versions of everything whatsoever. The, even engines, if you remember back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, engines were showing some positions which were completely normal and today they are absolutely lost. So things have changed and I feel like this new younger generation, they're in a way lucky because so many ways to improve your chess digital way that we simply didn't have access to. Actually, I was in Biel uh, two years ago and uh, there was Niel Sarin and I asked him, what do you, what is your favorite chess book? I feel like this is always a nice question to ask the grandmaster and he said, what? Do you study your books? What is a chess book? <laughs> and so I totally agree, the young generation of grandmasters is more into lots of online tools uh, but generally what I like to see that many of the top grandmasters I know personally like Firuja, Prague, uh, Neil Tsarin they are super genuine person and it's something I like because even if they are I mean for example in India they are all star they are all stars uh, but they are still super genuine and I like this aspect of them. Well, I just asked Ali Reza last time um, why he's playing fewer chess and he said that he's uh, into fashion designer and he's getting a serious path to it. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I would say that the next world champion is going to be Ikaru Nakamura. And the reason is that now that Magnus is out of the, the title, is uh, going to wanting to take the title for Magnus. I like your idea, I definitely do. Um, well, maybe uh, next World Championship match is gonna be Firuja versus Hikaru. We are going to commentate it. <laughs> I would definitely let the pawns move backwards. That would be covering all my weakest spots on the board. I like this. It's like a way to go in the past and change what your mistake was. I like this idea, but I would remove draws. I like either to win or to lose. Let's find a way to finally get rid of the draws and I get I will get more excitement on the chessboard. <laughs> I learned already about chess and tennis, uh, that there was a championship in Germany last year. Uh, actually, Alexandra Kosteniuk played in it. Uh, but basically, you could do so many connections. I like connecting uh, the sport, a mind sport with a physical sport. So like something like running. Um, I would like to do a challenge with Dina push-ups. 
chess. So after every game, you need to do 10 push up. You think you would be good at it? Yeah. You think you would beat me? An easy club. Oh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> when it comes to me, uh, what I would combine chess with, I definitely like the answer table tennis. No, wait, did you say, okay, tennis, you said tennis. Uh, yeah, let's go with table tennis plus chess. You know, uh, I'm good at table tennis. I, I even beat MBL in table tennis. I could definitely fight for the world crown. Oh, that's nice. Table tennis. And we have a table tennis table. Wait, we have a ping pong table right here in the Immortal Game office. So you guys better check it out. You would probably crush me at table tennis. We have to play a game right after this video. Okay. <laughs> It's hard, but I will not say chess queen uh, because it's way too standard. Um, I'd rather go for the knight because it's my favorite piece in time trouble. Because with the knight, you're going to swindle so many games because the movement of the knight is not predictable. And um, so the knight made me win so many games in time trouble. So I'll become a knight. You like to be unpredictable. Okay, well, I would go with a poem because a poem reflects myself in a way, you know, it started as someone very, very unexperienced, very uh, unexperienced is a good word. You start with um, people with slow steps in life. Yeah, you, you know, you reach your, yeah, very humble, very humble. Very inexperienced, you learn step by step until one day you become a queen. And this is when the world belongs to you. I had one quest in mind for a mortal game, which I would really love to add. You have to talk after each move until the move 30. So you're forcing trash talk. Trash talking your opponent as a quest for a moral game. Oh, I really like this one actually. I'm like um, obsessed about one opening, so I would like to add play the grub because it's not just a normal opening, um, but you're forcing the worst chess opening. It's kind of kind of cool. Why don't you go with ball cloud then? Well, ball cloud is not even an opening. It's respectful to call the ball cloud an opening. Damn girl. So right. If I were Alyssa Santrama, we wouldn't be the master Alyssa Santrama. Then I would definitely accept a challenge of having a match of chess boxing versus Dina Bell and Kaya. <laughs> oh my god. Well, um, then if I would be Dina Belancaya, I would definitely refuse to have a match versus women feed a master Alessio Santeramo to preserve your head because I would punch you so hard that would be very terrible for your head. Damn girl, you do have a trash talking, but what is behind your punches? Show me. No, I'm not. I'm not fighting. Uh, listen, our interviewer is Italian, and uh, so I need to say that I don't eat pizza with pineapple, but I need to confess a crime. I've tried it, and it's also not too bad, because everything on pizza is decent. But honestly, if you want to have a good pizza, listen to me. You put tomato, you put mozzarella cheese, then uh, you you add. And this is a novelty by Alessio Santeramo. You had some mascarpone. It's, 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 it's new, but it's very good. And then right up after, right, right after, right. And then when the pizza is ready, you put some raw ham on top of it. And that's the best pizza in the world. Would you eat pizza with pineapple? Well, just to make Karu happy. I'll be honest. I don't like pizza so there is no danger for me answering this question 
Oh my god. Can we stop this interview here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Aladdin Lamb. If I had three wishes, I would go with Origin 2400, because this way I would finally get my IAM title. My second wish would be so that each and every one of my YouTube videos was a success. So, the, you know, the day that I opened YouTube Studio, I would have one out of ten after every publication. My third and last wish, and this is the very important one, to rematch Andrea Botas in chess boxing. I like this one. I will be watching that uh, that match and try this time not to to keep the cardio. Huh? We'll train the cardio together so that you get prepared for that match. My first wish would be to keep good health for a long time, because without that, you, 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 you cannot punch Andrea Botas in the face. And it's something that I don't give for granted. Then I would like to have two villains, uh, one in Switzerland where I live, um, and one in the Canaries for the winter period where uh, I, I went very big. <laughs> Oh, wow. And then one at the canaries for the winter period because in Switzerland it's very cold. And then because I put the two wheelers in the same wish just to have a third one, I would definitely be Grandmaster. Why do you have to limit yourself at 2400? Well, I'm already a Grandmaster, so you know, there is an extra. Yeah, so you are, you are more than a Grandmaster, you are a woman Grandmaster. <laughs> exactly, so I don't have to, you know, that. But I understand, I understand your wish, though. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Why if you're a grandmaster you want to be international master? I want to have a um you want to have the gender free title. Oh have or you want to have the same title of Gotham Chess. Also, I want to put the man out of business, yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Amino era. Because I'm a champion. But this is from boxing movie. I know. You still don't want to box me? Ah, they'll stop. You don't want to get hurt. Many other games. I mean, I still play many other games. So, but I'm a lot into board games. So maybe checkers. For me, it's easy. It's super easy. If I were not a professional chess player, I would be a professional soccer player. We believe that. I was good. I am still good. I'm amazing at soccer. You haven't seen me in action. Every chess player knows that I am, you know, the part is there where I play soccer. Okay, I want to see a game of soccer with all the ambassadors of Immortal Game. Oh yes, let's do that. We have to do that. I want to play. Oh my gosh, we have to do that. I want to play. Yes. I love to play soccer too. How many? Italian, German, English. For me, it's three and a half. Russian, when in French, English, German. Well, but I also speak a bit of French, a bit of Spanish. Okay, then go with you. Okay, you. Je parle français très bien. Hola, chicos, yo hablo español. Muy bien. If you know only two phrases, that doesn't count. I really study German. I can, like, I can survive in Germany. Okay, then you win. <laughs> that, okay, no, no, no <laughs> argument here. No <laughs> argument. LA seems but pro. I'm also very bad, actually, but she says I'm pro. Imagine. Yeah, wh whenever I have that delicious, I always call Alicia. I mean, I always clip, eh, <laughs> clip something for Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> 
super easy, actually. Bobby Fischer. Sorry. Not Bobby Fischer. <laughs> I didn't think it's true. See, I'm the better interviewer. I, uh, I have interest of interviewing someone. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, I would interview Gotham Chess. Well, I think it requires someone who is already dead. Oh, no. <laughs> In the past, how are you going to, to even interview a dead person? No, I guess if you were, if you had a chance to interview someone in like in the history, imagine. Oh, like you don't have this chance. What would be your dream? Beth Armour. That's a nice one. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Dear one for the masters, the Lacius and Ramos community, dear people on Discord, all of you watching this, one day, I promise, you're gonna end up having watch parties of Dina Belenkaya OTP chess games. <laughs> Maybe that will happen one day, so we make Dina happy. It already happened, actually. Dear chess community of Dina of Dina Belenkaya already happened. Um, what am I going to tell you? I mean, stay strong and play chess, have fun and stay strong. Your content creator is difficult, but she will give you good content. Okay. Okay. I, from, from you, it did sound like a compliment. I get that. Um, a word to a Marvel game chess community. Yes. This one. <laughs> no, uh, actually, today I um, I was looking at a video that might appear on my YouTube channel uh, where I completed all my four quests in a game and I won that game. So, do that. You can do it. It's possible! Together. <laughs> together. Collaborating, doing content for a Marvel game, I would say... You better watch out, you're gonna have a very hard time. I agree.